so much, folks. It's, uh, I, I mean, you don't even understand how excited I am to be here tonight. I'm just uh, so thrilled uh, to be doing this, and uh, I'd probably be even more excited if comedy is what I want to do for a living. <laughs> then I would have been, because I actually wanted to be a motivational speaker. I'll be honest with you, I wanted to, I did, because I love those. The only thing I don't like about the motivational speakers is the cheesy cliches they're always throwing out. You know what I mean? These, Cheesy, uh, they just, and here's the thing, if I was gonna do it, I think I'd put new twists on the old cliches to keep it fresh, to keep it exciting, you know? So if it was me, if, if I was doing it, it would be something like this. Um, if at first you don't succeed, try and try and try and try and try and try and try until you become angry and bitter and are alone! Just, just twist it up a bit, keep it fresh, keep it. That freaked you guys out a little bit there? It kind of freaked you out. This is gonna freak you out even more. I'm pretty sure hands aren't supposed to be this big. Do you know what I mean? Is that? <laughs> My hands are huge. I, uh, <laughs> it's just not right. You know what I mean? I, uh, I forget how big they are sometimes, you know? I woke up in the middle of the night the other night there. I was like, ah! Oh, sorry, okay. Uh, but there's a horse's head on my pillow. It's just my hand. It's a hand thing. Hands are huge. Every time I shake somebody's hand, I tickle their armpit. It's just too much hand. <laughs> no, I'm uncomfortable too. Sorry about that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it was tough growing up with hands this big. I had a big fat red pencil till, till 12th grade. You know what I mean? A big fat red one? No, I can get this done. Let's go. Not the same finite motor skills the other kids had with their stubby little hands, you know? Couldn't do the things they could do. At least not as well as them. So I didn't like a lot of things we, uh, we did in school. As well, except for finger painting. I love finger painting. <laughs> hey, I'm on a paper! <laughs> and paint, actually. I'm on a paint as well. You wanna bring some over here? I can, no, I can help you. Sure, I can give you a hand. No problem. No, I have arms. I just don't need them. <laughs> Still finger paint. It's kind of, a, kind of a hobby of mine now. I was doing some, uh, some finger painting last weekend there. I, uh, I painted the garage. <laughs> do hand signs for the deaf, you do the sign language for the deaf there until they, uh, until they made me stop. I guess I was scaring the deaf people or something, you know? Stop, it's, it's too loud, it's too loud. <laughs> this doesn't look right either, does it? Look at that, that's not. My head is too small too. I'm... Is that one freakness? I've got this one too. I don't know. Shouldn't be able to touch uh, um, um, both ears with your same hand, can you? Is it, you know what I mean? That's, that's probably not a good fit then, I would say. A circus clown, that's what I am. I'm not even the clown, I'm in the freak show, that's what I am. So I try to cover up as much as I can, cover up, keep my hands in my pocket, I try to make my head look bigger, you know? hands in my pocket, I pull up my socks. <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, I feel bad for my kids, because uh, they're freaks too. Uh, it's just the genes they have, you know? Big hands, you can tell right from birth. We're in the delivery room, all ready to go there. My wife's on the delivery table, and she's got the... Uh, uh, man, it's a good thing I'm recording this, because I keep messing this up every single time. And now I can finally retire the bit. She's wearing a uh, gown. hospital gown. Thank you. I was going to call it a kilt once again. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea why I want to do it. Every time I, I want to talk about it being a kilt, and uh, we weren't giving birth in a Scottish hospital or something. Like that. <laughs> All right, lass, give a great big shove for Dr. McGregor. Push it. Look at the size of his hands. <laughs> Quick, let slap him before he slaps us all. But uh, I'll tell you about the birthing event too. It really bothers me when I hear some fathers talk about it and they're like, oh, it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever experienced. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> it's gross, okay? <laughs> Baby, yes, beautiful, wonderful thing. Uh, birthing event? <laughs> it's disgusting. That's true. I don't do well in hospitals and uh, 
And I guess my wife was in a bit of discomfort as well. That's true. No, that's true. That's, that part's true. And when the head came out, the doctor went and grabbed this suction thing. Have you ever heard of this suction tool thing? It's like this little plunger thing with this hole and this tube connected to it. It's connected to a machine. They turn the machine on and... It's le leverage is what the doctor said. Eh? Leverage? It's a baby. It's not a calf. You know what I mean? And he was reefing on it too. He's like, you got some leverage now. Here we go. My first experience, you're going to rip his head off. No, it's leverage. We got good leverage. I didn't think I was a doctor. You know, I was probably like a maintenance guy or something. Yeah. What you guys need on there is a shop vac. There he goes. Catch him. Before he bounces down the hall, catch him. Congratulations, you got a bouncing baby boy. Look at that. <laughs> As a result of this thing, my boy was born with this huge bump on his head. He did. It's like he sucked up and swelled that way for like two or three weeks. It's like cartoon goose egg looking thing. Creepiest thing. I had to keep a little, little hat on. When people came to see him. You know, what's with the hat? Never mind the hat. Okay. Oh, look at his hands. All right, take the hat off. Then. There's your freak show. Okay. There it is. Laugh it up. Might as well get used to it now. I don't know. They, I remember the first time they, uh, I got to hold him, he was, uh, he'd been in the womb for a long time, so his, his skin was really dry. So what they do is they cover him in Vaseline, you know? So, so the first time I got to hold him, he was shining. You know, it was this, this shining moment in time, you know? Like, oh, he's slippery, huh? <laughs> hey, he fixed his head. I wasn't that bad of a parent. I wasn't the greatest, though. No. I wasn't, I'm not that great of a husband either. I, uh, I made mistakes in the pregnancy time, you know, when you, and I'll be honest with you, honest with you folks, uh, you women are, you're a little more sensitive during that time. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> a lot of hormones running, running wild in a lady's body during that time, you know? It causes a lot of hills and valleys emotionally, right? And it's, it's, uh, all right, it's mainly valid, okay? It's more of a, <laughs> It's more of an abyss release. <laughs> How far down does that go? <laughs> the man's job is to say the right thing, make her feel better, right? And uh, um, I, I don't know if uh, you know this about me uh, so far, but uh, I choke under pressure a little bit. I'm not a, not a real pressure guy, you know? So I mean, that's when I was the worst. And I knew I'd made a mistake, so I tried to fix it, and I just kept making it worse and worse, you know? Uh, I remember this one time, my wife was having a rough day, she was eight months pregnant, she's just crying away, had a rough day. She's like, oh, look at me, I'm fat now. What do you mean now? <laughs> oh, no, sorry, no, no, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat. <laughs> no, you're not fat, no, you, you, you tricked me. <laughs> it's all in your head. <laughs> your fat head. <laughs> I'm gonna go sleep on the couch. <laughs> There's more room there. <laughs> It's a fat couch. That's what I'm talking about. It's a fat-headed couch is what it meant. Pretty sweet couch though. This couch we got? Oh, I had a lot of good sleeps on it. Um, my wife, uh, I make a lot of jokes about her. She's a pretty lady. Pretty lady. Um, she, uh, I'll tell you, when she gets in front of a mirror though, she, uh, she used to model and she gets in front of a mirror, she reverts to her modeling days. It's funny because I've seen a lot of women do this. You just be, uh, women, you just kind of be, but you get in front of a mirror and your face, you do things with your face. Have you noticed that? I start to sound like Bill Cosby there. You do things with your face and contort your face. But you do. A woman could walk around just like, mmm, mmm, mmm. You, you stick in front of a mirror in front of her, at least my wife, and it'd just be like this. The transformation was, was instant. It's like. I don't understand that. I, I avoid the mirror, you know? I don't like seeing myself in the mirror. Ah, freak! Oh, it's me. Oh, yeah, it's me. That's right. It's just me. No, I'll be honest with you, folks. I, uh, I do want you to laugh. I'm talking about making fun of myself. I, I do want you to laugh, uh, but it, it hurts my feelings. So it's kind of a mixed, <laughs> mixed bag there. I don't know. The, uh, I, I, you know what, my kids, uh, the second pregnancy is very different. Uh, my, my son uh, would get these hiccups in the womb that were so strong they felt like kicks. They weren't kicks, they were actual hiccups. So, so strong she woke me up at night, middle of the night, my wife's belly's resting on me there. He gets the hiccups, wakes me up. I'm trying to be a good husband this time, you know, because the one needs a lot of sleep when she's pregnant, so I'm 
I'm trying to do my part, you know? So I was like, ah! <laughs> ah! Oh, did I wake you? Okay. Yeah, I'll go sleep on the fat couch. That's a good idea. That's probably wise. <laughs> Poor kid, though, he was born with this uh, terrible rash on his face when he was born. He had this terrible, terrible rash. And we had this, this cream that healed it up nicely. Put some cream on and healed up nice. But as it started to heal, it got kind of itchy, you know? So worse than the actual uh, rash were these scratch marks. Because he would just scratch and scratch away at his face. And we, we tried everything we could to keep him from doing it. But he, he, just, he just kept doing it. And we, we didn't want to do this, but we finally got one of those, uh, those big dog cones. <laughs> you know? Had to be a big one, too, because he's got daddy's hands. I can get it! I'll get it! Peanut allergy too, my son. Um, uh, poor guy. He's uh, oh hey, let me ask you this. By applause. How many people have a peanut allergy here this evening? By applause. How many have a peanut allergy? A couple of you. Okay. Now uh, watch this. This is really cool. By applause. How many people know young children who have a peanut allergy? <laughs> See, isn't that weird? Because we didn't used to have all these allergies, and now as time goes on, there's more allergies. Back when I was a kid, I didn't know anybody. My generation, nobody had peanut allergies, you know? We wouldn't have known what to do with them if they did. Maybe, there's, maybe some did. We just didn't know. You know. What happened to Paul? I don't know. He just fell down. <laughs> when we finish eating our peanut butter sandwiches and call somebody. That's a good idea. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to try mouth to mouth. See if that helps out at all. I always stick my tongue out for that. I, uh, I don't think that's proper procedure. I'll be honest with you, that's... It's been a while since I took the first aid course, but I don't think that's... That's right. My son, though, uh, my son does, though, he, uh, he's, in a, he's in a peanut-free school. There's so many kids in his school that, that have the peanut allergy that they just said, don't bring, don't bring penis to school at all. And uh, my son's not too bad. Some kids in, in his school are really sensitive, right? Like, they're very, very... It, it's, it's, it's really dangerous, you know? You get, they, so some of them, they get them, like, 30 feet of some peanut dust, and they're like, peanuts! <laughs> Hang on a second, wait a minute. No, it's just walnut dust, everybody. False alarm! <laughs> my son's not too bad. He will swallow. If he, if he ingested enough, things could swell shut. You know, and he, he could die. We do have the needle. We have the EpiPen just in case he comes into contact with peanuts. Or if he doesn't clean his room or whatever. <laughs> Government says you can't spank, you know, but it's, uh... <laughs> you can save their life anytime you want, so... No, that's, that's how I save lives, several. Just to make sure. No, my son, uh, he, uh, he knows, if he bites into someone to come into contact with peanuts, his tongue kind of tingles, so he knows right away. And I know it sounds like bad parenting, but that's just kind of how we deal with it. Well, let me correct that, that's kind of how I deal with it. My wife has a different method. But for me, it's like, take a bite of the cookie. Are there peanuts in there? Okay, there are. Okay, spit it out. S no, s no, spit it all out and swish the water. Swish, you'll be fine. Just swish, swish the water. No, you'll be fine. Swish it. You're, look how big his lips are getting. You just seen him last week. They were bigger than his hands. Take another bite. I just want to show him. One more bite. I just want to show him. Look, I got an epi pen right here and you didn't take out the garbage. One more bite! He really does have a peanut allergy, by the way. I wouldn't, I wouldn't make a joke about that unless, unless I did. I know uh, somebody asked me that after a show one time and they were, they were pretty upset. But uh, no, he does have a peanut allergy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't make that up. Um, I just try to make sure everyone knows, you know, I'm, I'm talking about my own experiences. Because um, I've had people, I had a person come up to me one time and they were offended that I was doing the jokes about the size of my hands. Because they said, and I quote, it sets a bad example for kids about making fun of themselves. What do you even say to that, you know? I was like, um... Maybe comedy's not for you. Maybe it's not your... It's my own fault, though, because, uh, you know, I, I married her, so... <laughs> and that's probably why I'm sweating so much right now. I don't know. They're, uh, they're good kids. I, I didn't tell their names yet. Have I told you their names? Uh, Cooper is my oldest. He's 12 years old, and my eight-year-old is uh, his name. He's named Hunter. And I'll be honest with you. Uh, eight years ago, when we were naming him, uh, I didn't want to call him that. It wasn't my favorite name. Uh, but my wife and I had this deal. Um, I can make jokes about her, and she uh, makes decisions. So uh, 
Hunter it is. <laughs> My big idea when Cooper is three and a half years old, bringing a new baby home, I thought it'd be a great idea to let him name his younger brother, right? Sometimes the older child feels kind of left out, and this way he feels like he's a part of the team kind of thing. And I'm, I'm glad we didn't do it now, because uh, first of all, um, he would've been named Little Bear, you know, which is, <laughs> that was his favorite show back then. And secondly, he wouldn't spell AOP, because those are the only three letters he knew at the time, you know? It was a pretty tough first day of school for that poor kid, eh? Okay, is, uh, oh boy, is, uh, is, is Al, Al Aop? Is it, is it Aop? Uh, it's pronounced Little Bear. Uh, <laughs> My brother named me, okay? Is that? <laughs> Can we laugh at me at recess? <laughs> I gotta stop throwing taglines, it's throwing me off. <laughs> I just added that little tag, I've never done that before. And I'm like, hey, that's funny. And then I'm like, where was I? And then it's done. <laughs> I don't know, I, I'm wiping sweat, I'm not checking, I don't have cheat notes, just so you know. Because you know? I could write a lot, couldn't I? That's, uh... <laughs> I have a couple of hours worth of just, I can't even. Um, here, here's the thing about it too. I, uh, I try to be a good dad, but uh, sometimes they'll say things to me, make me feel like I'm a horrible dad. Um, I was a while back, I was playing with one of my sons. I'm not gonna tell you which one, because that would be embarrassing to them. Um, I was playing with one of my sons. We're playing away, having a great time. All of a sudden he stopped in the middle of it. And he was like, hey dad, pretend you're a real dad. <laughs> Then he, then he kind of realized what he said. He said, pretend you have a real job. <laughs> I do have a real job. I, I'm a comedian. That's not what mom says. <laughs> do you want to chit chat all day or do you want to play Barbies, huh? What do you want to do? Now help me get her dress on for the ball. I hop Barbie, by the way. I'm a hopper. Some people glide, but that just looks creepy to me. You know? <laughs> Hopping is more of a walking you know what I mean like it's just think about it next time you're playing Barbies I don't know they're uh, good kids uh, my uh, my youngest is, is uh, addicted to sugar though and I don't just mean he's got a sweet tooth he's addicted to sugar you know what he calls the little sugar cubes putting coffee there he calls those squares hey <laughs> like it's some kind of dessert or something hey dad can we have some squares for dessert no it's it's pure sugar, okay? It's not a, it's, go upstairs. I'm coming up, I'm coming up with an EpiPen. Just go. <laughs> Be ready. I wouldn't get that mad, but it, it does kind of drive me crazy, his, his little problem. We, we got it under control now, though. We definitely got it under control. You ever heard of a nicotine patch? We got them on this uh, sugar patch. And it's really been helping. <laughs> no, nobody buys that at all? Okay, fine. Uh, <laughs> impossible, eh? Sugar patch? Okay, sugar patch is on the arm. Addiction to sugar. Under control. <laughs> so good. So good. I don't know, Bible says laughter is good like medicine. Hey, it's good medicine. I was reading this, uh, this article a couple, uh, couple weeks back. And actually, I always say that every joke is a couple weeks back. This was a couple years ago now, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I don't even know if it, was, if it was an article. It could have been on TV. But it was a, I remember it was a reli reliable source, okay? So let's just, can we just... So in this study that they did, they, they found out that, uh, that when you laugh, it helped relieve stress. When you laugh, it uh, releases B endorphins into your body. And <laughs> that's what it looks like too, woo! <laughs> Something like that, but it's an inward tickle. Uh, I'm not a doctor, but I think that's how it works. Um, but so that and, that, and you relieve your stress. So if you came out here tonight and, uh, and you laughed, uh, good for you. You just, you just did yourself a world of good, good for you. Um, if you're stressed out tonight and you came out here and you didn't laugh, um, maybe you should just go. Uh, <laughs> seriously, it's probably at dangerous levels by now. It's like, I'm supposed to be laughing. I'm supposed to be relieving stress. <laughs> here, let's hear it. <laughs> Told you I wasn't a doctor. All right, let's not, let's not worry about the details here. Uh, I don't know, as a, as a parent, I like to use it as a parenting technique too, you know? My, uh, my, the other day, my youngest son had this uh, horrible nightmare, and he came to our room, he was really, he was really scared, he was upset, and uh, 
And I was taking him back to his room to go back to sleep. And I thought, well, this is the perfect opportunity, right? I'll tell a little joke, you know, we'll both get a good laugh and, and he'll get a good night's sleep, you know? So we're, we're walking into his room and I was like, hey, there's someone in your room with a knife! <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay, off to bed, let's go. Sweet dreams. <laughs> Hey, how come the bed's wet? <laughs> Honey, wake up. We got a wet bed here. I need you to... I'm just kidding, by the way. I wouldn't wake her up and make her clean that up. I'd, uh... I'd probably just leave it. Uh... That'll dry. Uh... He's got a different system. Disney World, I took him to Disney World. Uh, exciting, exciting place, amazing place. I pause, how many people have been to Disney World? In, in, or Disneyland in California? I pause, thank you. Yeah. Amazing, right? Um, for those of you who've been there, you can back me up on this. I have never been in one place where I've seen so many angry, screaming parents and sad, crying kids in my entire life. Do you know what I mean? Everywhere you turn around, these kids are just crying and the parents are yelling at them, what are you doing? It's like, and it, it's, it's amazing, because it's an amazing place, but they're just like, you know, I, I have fun, what are you, I'm trying to have fun. Like, I can hear the kids, and it's like, wait, did you say you're trying? Did you say you're trying to have fun? We're at Disney World. How do you try to have dis how do you try to have fun at Disney World? Can you just hang on a second? Yeah, no, when I'm done talking to him, then I can talk to you. Thank you very much. Yes, no, I'm talking to my son. Thank you. This is a, this, we're in the Magic Kingdom right now. Did you know that? We're in a magical place, okay? You don't try to have fun in a magical place. It just happens magically. Can you wait? No, clearly I am not done. Thank you. Wait there. Yes, thank you very much. This is the place where dreams come true. Did you know that? There's dreams coming true all around you. So you better find, you better wish upon a star. Wish upon a star. Mickey, I said wait. Your ears are huge, but you don't listen. And by the way, you get a week-long pass and you get kicked out at the beginning, you don't get your money back. It was okay that we wanted to get home anyways because we, uh, we got a Wii, got a Wii for Christmas. We're all excited about the Wii, playing the Wii. And by applause, how many people uh, know what I'm talking about, the Wii? Uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty common. I try to explain it as well as I can. It's not just, a, not just a remote, but it also has like a sensor on it. So when you, you move, your, your snowboarder does flips or whatever, right? So you, um, I tried to explain as well as I can because I was doing a show one time. There's a, an older couple sitting in the front. They're sitting really close so I could hear what they were saying. And uh, at one point in time, uh, she leaned over to her husband and she's like, what's a wee? And I could hear him, honestly, this is what he said. Something from Ireland. <laughs> and I kept referring to it as the wee game. Oh, it's a wee game we're playing. And so it was a bit of a, <laughs> just a wee little game. Uh, it was an Irish, small Irish toy. <laughs> but uh, we, it's fun, hey, a lot of fun. We, oh, it's fun, but. Uh, Man, we all look stupid when we play it, don't we? We look like idiots, we get in there? <laughs> I do, anyway. I don't know about you guys, but I'm like... <laughs> and tiring. Oh, man, can it get tiring. Playing the Wii? I remember my first time playing. We, we hooked it all up, and I was all... I remember my first time playing. I got, I got all there, and I was like... Ah, I was just going for it. I did that. Okay, can we put a game in? <laughs> it's fun. My son's favorite game, my youngest son's favorite game on the Wii is the, is the Wii Boxing. You ever seen the Wii? But this is my son doing the Wii Boxing. <laughs> and he wins. <laughs> I tried to show him proper form, like a hole like this. You, you jab a little bit, maybe come around, and I'm losing, right? I'm like, keep jabbing, don't block, make sure you're blind. He's like, no, Dad, it's like this. <laughs> the problem is, he thinks he can fight now, you know? <laughs> I'm scared he's gonna like take on the school bully or something like that. You've been talking to us all year, it's time somebody stood up to you. <laughs> Lead with the head. <laughs> I don't know, there's different levels you can do with the Wii though. This, this is what I discovered, I was playing the Wii baseball. It's the Wii baseball, I was playing. And uh, I had the strap around my wrist so I wouldn't accidentally let go of it and uh, um, break the TV again. And, <laughs> And I'm whipping as hard as I can, right? I'm in there, I'm just, I'm pitching as hard as I can, just like 44 miles an hour. 44, is that it? Are you kidding? Okay, like it was, I was giving it everything. I was like, okay, you want some heat? Here comes some heat. 
<laughs> 46. 46? Are you kidding me? I was giving it everything I had. In between innings, I'm icing my shoulder down. <laughs> Beads of sweat are just pouring down. I'm like, I can't lose to the fat-headed kids. I cannot lose. Have you ever seen the wee fat-headed kids? They got huge heads. No arms and these hands just floating. <laughs> Make me so mad. And I got, it was the third inning. I needed, it's all, all it is is three innings, these games, right? And I was done. I couldn't do it anymore. My arm was throbbing. I needed some relief pitching. I didn't have it, so I just gave up. I did one of these. 99 miles an hour. Because <laughs> the game doesn't differentiate, right? Here to here is the same as here to here, but this is a lot faster, right? <laughs> And that's the problem because kids, they, they learn how to do all this. They're good gamers, right? They love the games and they get really good at it, but then they think they can do the sport, you know? Look, look at me, Dad, I'm really good at baseball, look at me. No, you're not, you're good at poking someone in the eye. I don't know what that is. It's not baseball. It's not baseball. You can see it too, I, man, you could, you could tell. I went to my son's track meet a couple years ago. To, you could tell which kids have been playing way too much Wii, you know? On your mark, get set. It's, uh, I, I can't tell you how excited I am to be doing this uh, show tonight. I've been doing comedy for like 12, 13 years, and uh, I never did a project that was just my own. And so I'm just, I'm so thankful you guys all came out. I just feel really blessed to, to be doing this. Uh, you know, if there's anything that I, I could, uh, if there's anything that I wanted you to take home other than, than uh, laughs, is there's anything I could get you to take home, it would just be to know that uh, just how much God loves you. But not just how much God loves you, but how deep and how intimate that love is. God says he knows the, the number of hairs on your head. And that's an intimate love. You think about it, the number of hairs on your head. I mean, you know, for some of us, it's not that big a deal. Uh, but, <laughs> woo, I know how many, but anyway, that's not what I'm here to say. That's, that's I'm sorry, that's terrible. But you think about it, you can lose 200 a day. So he's keeping track all day long. He knows at the beginning of the show, and you lean back and you laughed at one point, and some hair can't, he knew. That's, a, that's an intimate love, you know what I mean? And it doesn't matter how bad your hairdo is, is and, uh, which is uh, thankful for most of us who went through our teen years in the 80s. <laughs> was, he still loved us. I used to have a, well, I had a mullet. I don't know how else to say it. I was trying to, it was cool. Back when I was a teenager, it was like, we called it hockey hair, right? Because you put the helmet on, you still had a tuft of hair for the ladies. You know, you know. It was terrible. It was like really short. It was the, uh, it was bad. I'm glad times have changed now. I used to have hair growing down to my shoulders in the back. Now I've got hair growing uh, from my shoulders and my back. So it's a different, it's a different, not a lot. I'm not like a furry back guy, but I do, have the, I do have the occasional rebel follicle coming out for a look or something. He just comes out of nowhere. Hey, how come I'm the only one out here? And then he, because I'm walking. That's why he's doing this. Because he's, this is making you uncomfortable, isn't it? I apologize. Just so you know, I pluck them. I don't leave them there. I pluck them. I know it's not the manly thing to do either, but uh, I pluck them. I don't care. And I know what you're thinking. How do you pluck them if it's on your back? Uh, you forgot how big my hands are. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> I knew a guy with a furry back. I played hockey with this guy. He was just like head to toe. He was just hair between his toes too. I'm pretty sure I never saw, but he walked around giggling. <laughs> I think there was tickling going on between toes. Nice guy, he's played my hockey team there. I remember the first time I saw him, um, I didn't mean to do this, but I looked over and I was like, Sasquatch! And I was like, oh, okay, no. I'm sorry, he, seriously, he was just, he's so hair. I thought, honestly, for a while, I thought we were in a new Disney movie or something, you know? Sasquatch joins the team, you know, we're having trouble, but he's really good, and all of a sudden we got a shot at the playoffs. <laughs> it didn't happen. He was horrible. Uh, <laughs> terrible. He could not skate. He was really bad. I think hair was growing over his skate sometimes. Like. <laughs> nice guy, though, really nice guy. Uh, once a year, he'd shear himself down and sell the hair to make sweaters for charity. So really nice. <laughs> I, you know what? Okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I know that's, that's a little bit gross. I told it to my mom, and, and she, was, she was disgusted. Uh, still wore the sweater, but... Uh, 
was for a good cause. So, I don't know. I talk about being a freak. I talk about the, that's what I'm talking about here, my freakness. I, these are my, this is my freakness, right? I talk about the outside. But, but the thing I'm, I'm trying to tell you guys, I, I'm also a freak on the inside. And I'm not talking about like I got a huge kidney or something like that. It's really weird in here. Although a tiny bladder might be. Uh, <laughs> just saying. Um, but no, this is what I'm saying. When, when, God created, uh, when God created us, he created us to be in a relationship with him. That's the way it was supposed to be. And uh, because of, uh, well, from Adam on, well, Eve on, actually. Um, <laughs> hey, look it up. Uh, <laughs> Because of that, that, that relationship was broken. And uh, w when we don't have a relationship with God, that's not the way we're supposed to be. If, th if that's normal, um, then we're freaks, right? Because we're not, we're not the way we we're intended to be. And uh, that's why God sent his son, Jesus. This is what I believe. That's why God sent his son, Jesus Christ, uh, to die and rise again for those sins, uh, to be that atonement. I had, you know, here's, here's the thing, too. Um, I've had people say, well, if God loves us so much, like you're saying, why don't you just forgive us? I don't understand why we have to go through Jesus. And it, it's really simple. Um, God is holy and God is just. And there needs to be, there needs to be uh, atonement. There needs to be uh, a price paid for, for our sin, for that breaking of the relationship. And it's really simple. Um, if, you, if you bought me a car, if you bought me a Porsche, okay? I'm just saying, think about it. If you did... <laughs> And, uh, and you gave me the keys, but I never walked out there, I never got in, I never drove it off. Maybe I didn't even take the keys. I didn't accept the gift. And, th and that's what it's like. And, and the gift is, is God's grace. And that's why we go through Jesus, because this is our gift. We need to accept that gift. That, that's what I believe. And um, that's, that's really, you know, that's one of the reasons I do this. I, I want people to, to know about, about how much God loves them and what he went through uh, to reconcile us. And uh, actually, you know, my, my, my pastor this year really, really challenged me. Um, He's talking about the difference between religion and, uh, and gospel. And, and this is, by the way, I'm not looking to offend anybody. Um, this is what I believe. If you believe different, uh, write some jokes and rent a hall. Uh, <laughs> I hear the Mask Week Community Hall is open tonight, so. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> That's terrible. But this is what I believe. Um, all religion is, is virtually the same, okay? And it's all on a merit-based system. You do enough good things and you get rewarded or you make God happy or you um, avoid punishment. All these, it, it, but it's, it's merit-based. It's I do to get. And, and that's not what the gospel is. That's not, that's not at all what it is. The gospel is, is God saying, you're not good enough, but I love you so much that all you have to do is, is uh, believe, and, and I, will, I will save you. I will reconcile this. Um, that's why I do what I do, because I want people to know how much God loves them. Um, I probably don't need to talk about hairy backs when I do it, but uh, <laughs> everybody's got their method. Um, I don't know. That's, that's a lot of pressure, though, the love. We're supposed to love like, uh, like Jesus loves the church, our, our spouses. Did you know that? That's the comparison. <laughs> that's a pretty high bar to set, hey? <laughs> I gotta love like Jesus loves the church. Are you kidding? Um, no, I love my, I love my wife very much. Our love has changed over the years. Used to be this really, really sappy kind of puppy lovey thing, but now it's grown. It's matured. You know, I used to talk to her on the phone before shows, and it was the sappiest thing. It was seriously, it was sickening. It was like I love you more. <laughs> no, I don't think you love me more because I love you more. <laughs> no, how is that even possible? Because I just said I love you more. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> It was that sickening. I'd even make myself sick sometimes. I, uh, but it's changed now. It's grown. It's matured. I was talking to my wife on the phone uh, uh, last night before last night's show, and you could just tell it's different now. You know, I was like, okay, honey, I should probably get going. I, uh, I love you. In fact, I think I love you more. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> No, we'll be uh, we'll be married uh, 15 years, almost 15 years. Wonderful years. I love her very much. Um, we've, uh, but actually, you know, after 15 years, there's there's some things you uh, like. We like to spruce things up, keep it exciting, keep it fresh. You know, sometimes if we have a like a, uh, a social function, something like this. We'll go out to it, but we'll go to it separately. Eh? Pretend like we don't know each other at first. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> yeah. uh, we the only one that does this game. Uh, <laughs> 
try to get her to come home with me and stuff. It, uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't always work. Uh, last time we played it, she went to her mom's. So, uh, at least she's with family. <laughs> no. Yeah, she didn't know I was gonna do that one tonight. Uh, no, I have some habits that kind of drive me crazy, things I do that kind of, uh, she doesn't like uh, habits that I have. I, here's the thing, uh, I talk in my sleep a little bit, a bit of a sleep talker, and uh, yeah, I am, and I also sleep with my eyes open every once in a while. And, oh uh, yeah, right? It's, here's, here's what, it's really creepy. Sometimes I combine the two, right? Imagine roll over in bed and have a me stare at you, you know? <laughs> Mr. Jenkins wants more soup. Cheese. I just realized that's a whole different joke to you guys over here, isn't it? That's a completely different. I'm sorry about that. I apologize. That's not not as funny over there. Not as. Oh, we gotta be taping this one, do we? Uh... No, I. Um... I also have, uh, oh, I gotta tell you the story. I was, doing a, I was doing a show one time, told the story about that. Uh, there's this older couple that uh, had been, it was Leduc, Alberta. It doesn't matter where it is, but it looks like you wanna know. <laughs> and uh, so I'm do, uh, at the end of the show, these, this older couple comes up to me. They're about 85 years old. So, you know, they were, they were getting on in years. And, and he said to me, um, I gotta tell you a story about my wife and I on our wedding night. So this is, they had the wedding ceremony. This is the first night before the honeymoon started. This is their very first night together. She woke up in the middle of the night to see him sleeping but his eyes were wide open, and he was doing this. Yeah, you ought to fit in the trunk. <laughs> True story, he said that. I looked at her, and she was like, I didn't sleep for three weeks. I, uh... <laughs> Every time we went out of the house, I had a nap. That's the only way I got through. <laughs> Scary. But also, I also, there's another habit I have. I also have road rage, my wife says. And I don't know, honestly, if I've got road rage, and my wife's got what I call road nag, I would say. <laughs> Some start to finish, just bickety, bickety, slow down, speed up, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what she's doing on the wrong side, but it's uh, a British car? What in the world? It's a small car too, by the way. It's a very small. No, I don't have, I don't think I have road rage, but uh, after two blocks of that, I'm just, I'm just, I'm okay, but two blocks in, I'm just gripping that wheel, you know? Get out of the way! Gotta drop off the wife! <laughs> Whom I love some fierce. <laughs> it's pretty tiny, isn't it? This is a small car, very small. <laughs> so, it's a true story. This happened like about 10 years ago now. We're driving along this bridge. It was the middle of winter. We hit the sheet of black ice. We started spinning around out of control on this bridge. It was a high bridge. You go off into the river and you're gonna die, okay? In the, it's not supposed to be funny, but all right. Uh, <laughs> take the ones you like, I guess. Um, but as it's, spinning around out of, as it's spinning around out of control, we're about to go to our doom. In the middle of it, she's giving me the gears about it, right? I told you to slow down. What are you trying to do, get me killed? <laughs> not initially, but I'm starting to warm up to it. <laughs> Now will you please let me finish reading the paper? <laughs> I, uh, well, that's not entirely accurate either. I can't, I, I gotta tell you the, the real deal. Uh, my wife doesn't really yell like that. She doesn't know how to yell, I'll be honest with you. She knows how, but she, here's the thing. If you know somebody like this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. She knows that the pitch has to go higher, but she can't bring the volume up with it. Do you know anybody like this? It's amazing. She sounds like she's pretending to yell when she's yelling. It is the funniest thing. I'm getting sick and tired of this. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> what? Are you, are you mad? You're mad, aren't you? Are you mad? <laughs> Neighborhood dogs are like, oh. <laughs> and notice I hopped. I was hopping. <laughs> it's not. I'll make her yell sometimes just so I can hear it, you know? It's really funny. It's like, Lila, can you yell to the boys that it's time to eat? Uh, oh, actually, I was just, just starting something over here. Can you do it? <laughs> Watch her walk to the bottom of the banister. Boys, it's time to eat. <laughs> boys, I said it's time to eat. You better get down here right now before I get really 
Henny, stop yelling at the, at the boys. The dogs are gathering at the front door here. We got a whole bunch. <laughs> and like I said, we've been married for 15 years. Wonderful years. I love her very much. I'm going to spend the rest of my life with her. But, uh, but we've had some fights over the years. We've had some, we've had some screaming matches, you know? I'm pretty sure when we're doing that, the neighbors just think I'm yelling at myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, how can you always say that? I say that because you always do it. <laughs> I know I, you, you, you say I do it, but it's not even true. It is true. Why would I say it? You know what? I'm sick of getting yelled at. <laughs> and the neighbors are like, Leland's yelling at himself again. <laughs> and where's our dog? <laughs> That's the real reason I make jokes about her on the show, because uh, even if she was here, how would you know? <laughs> She'd be sitting in the back, hey, that's not true. <laughs> he exaggerates a lot of stuff, everybody. <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, I used to be more, rom rom more romantic, too. I used to do things a little better on that end. I used to, I used to here's what I used to do. Okay, this is a great thing. Think about, this is good, this is good. Think about it, write it down, write it down, this is good. I used to write little love notes, right? But I'd hide them all around the house, wouldn't tell her, and then she'd just come across it, oh, I get a love you, you know, it was awesome. Smartest thing I have ever done, because um, I haven't done it in like 12 years, and she's still finding them. <laughs> it's awesome. Oh, you love me? Hey! Huh? Who's the guy leaving surprises over here, huh? I'm a romantic, I guess you think. <laughs> She used to write me uh, love notes all the time. Used to. Uh, let me explain. I, I had a good thing going too, and I wrecked it. Oh, I wrecked it. She used to write me little love notes, and uh, but she's not a very good speller. And I used to just just torment her. I used to make fun of her so much. And uh, the last love note she ever, uh, the last uh, note she, well, love note, yeah. Uh, she sent me other notes since then, but it was all. Her. <laughs> but. You spelt this wrong. Yeah, jerk's not spelt with a... It's an A. It's Jark, I believe. I don't know if that's... I'm not sure. No, but the last love note she ever sent me, uh, beautiful. Like she went through and just meticulously went through every word and every... She had obviously put a lot of effort into it. And I was reading the whole thing and she's right in front of me as I'm reading it. And it was really nice. Romantic, beautiful. It was just, you know, it was moving. I got to the bottom and it was like, I love you, sweaty. Oh, sweetie. Is it sweetie? Okay, all right. Oh, nice, thank you. She was so mad. She was like, never again. I made it up to her, though. That Christmas got her a really nice gift. I got her this, uh, this really nice uh, dictionary. So it really made up. <laughs> Which she regifted immediately. Um, at my head. So, um, <laughs> why don't you look up jerk? Because uh, I know how to spell it, that's why. Uh, ERK. <laughs> I, uh, uh, here's the thing though, ladies, and uh, some, of the, some of the fellows aren't even married here yet, so let me, let me give, the, give you the goods, okay? When you go to get married, you're gonna be scared. You're gonna be, you can't let on, okay? You can't let on, and uh, it's the commitment. You're afraid of commitment. And well, I won't, yes, you will be. I'm still scared of commitment, okay? 15 years later, I don't know if I can do it. Here's the problem too, women, you don't tell us. You have certain expectations, you don't let us know. You have to tell us. I, here's, for example, when a woman comes down the aisle, there's a certain look you want in your groomsman waiting for you at the altar, right? There's a certain look you want when you come down the aisle. Women don't tell us that, do they? I didn't know. This is what a woman wants to see. She turns on the corner, this is what she wants to see waiting for her there. She wants. It's a little cheesy, but you'd take it, right? You would have taken that. This is what my wife got, right? She turned the corner, this is what she saw waiting for her.
Oh, beautiful memories. I denied it for years. I'm like, oh, it wasn't that bad. But they tape it! Oh, man. I was a mess the whole day. The entire day, I was just a complete emotional wreck. You know, at the, okay, at the end of the day, um, at the reception, the groom has to come up and thank everybody for coming and thank the toasting people for toasting. That's all you got to do, right? Um, this was me doing it, okay? This is before I started doing comedy, so it wasn't as smooth as the crowds as I am now. Um, <laughs> anyway, this is me at the reception, okay? Mom, Dad? <laughs> Thank you for loving me. <laughs> I love you guys so much. <laughs> I mean it. folks <laughs> thank you for accepting me and your family <laughs> that means so much to me that you'd accept me and your family I'll take a care I promise I'll take a care I really oh I love anniversaries. <laughs> sit and sit up and talk about a great day it was. Oh man, I, uh, I'm gonna do some impressions and I'm gonna get out of here. You guys have been so much fun. Thank you so much. I uh, I'll, okay, I'll do a quick impression. It's my impression of uh, Stevie Wonder singing a hymn. I'm gonna retiring these jokes after this show. So Stevie Wonder, he was a singer. Uh, <laughs> Stevie Wonder singing a hymn. Okay, Stevie Wonder singing a hymn. Amazing grace, I'm sweet, none sound, and then same, I'm rich like me. I once am all lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now. <laughs> That wasn't worth it. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I don't normally do impressions in my act because uh, clearly they're not very good. Uh, I don't know, you do an impression to somebody too, it's like you put them up on a pedestal, you're, you're putting them in a higher place than you. You know, it's almost like hero worship, you know, and I, I think that's wrong. You know? In fact, I think people that do impressions are losers. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> Thank you! Thank you very much! Oh, right then. <laughs> Jim Carrey. Is it Jim Carrey? It's, it's, he's like, that didn't even sound like Barack Obama. I don't know. <laughs> Does he walk like that? I don't think he walks like that. You guys have been amazing. I'm going to get out of here. Uh, I'll leave you with this. I'm a big James Bond fan. I like James Bond movies. One of my favorite things about those movies is the theme music. Not even just the theme music, but the accompaniment, right? Every time he walks into a room, he's got the coolest tunes playing, like the, the old Sean Connery days. He come walking in there, and I'll be like, James Bond. <clears throat> James Bond. <laughs> it was cool. It was hip, all right? I, I messed up. I know I messed up, but it's cooler than that. It was cool. I got taken the other day, that's what I need, you know? Hire a little band, kind of follow me around or something. To, they got to think like, what, what kind of theme music would I have, you know? The name's Clausen. <laughs> Leland Clausen. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, you guys. I am Leland Clausen. You've been a wonderful crowd. Thank you so much.